Hey friends, welcome to Hot News. It's Wednesday. I hope you're enjoying this little day to get over the middle of the week. I'm not calling it what it actually is because you guys are childish. Anyways, this episode of Hot News is brought to you by UFD Deals, which is our very own website. If you head on over to UFD.deals, you can find the latest product deals on all of your computer tech-related gadgets that you might want for upgrading your system or just making your house a really killer setup. Anyways, check out UFD Deals to save money on the latest ones. There's affiliate codes associated with that, so you just go, you click on the link, you buy the thing, we get a kickback for it. That's how that works. Anyways, thanks, Brett, for sponsoring Hot News. Good job. I really appreciate it. Anyways, let's move on into the first episode or first news piece we have of Hot News. Not the first episode episode. That's a while ago. Let's start off today with some like news that affects one particular person, but actually applies to a whole lot of content creators in general. So if you don't know already, Dr. Disrespect, who's a really huge streamer over on Twitch, he was streaming yesterday when gunshots actually broke through his window. It appears that somebody was specifically targeting his house and shooting out the window and actually just disturbing him while he was streaming. He also stated that this is the second time that it's happened this week, uh, which it just seems to appear that like he's specifically being targeted because people know where he lives. Fortunately, it just seems like there's only structural damage. Nobody was actually actually hurt and they even he even tweeted out afterwards that the doc and the family appreciates everyone's concerns and well wishes no one was hurt and it's being handled by the local police who actually happened to confirm that there was indeed a shooting so this isn't some big publicity stunt that they're doing but this does bring up the larger issue of things like doxing and like trying to target people who are online creators in their private homes which it makes it a little different because a private home is a personal business as well and so it's technically a business address. It's a really difficult thing to put yourself out on the internet and then to see people abuse it in such a way where they don't respect the privacy that you still maintain as a person and they view it, you as an entity that can be uh, like controlled and manipulated. Like we, we come and we make videos, we do streams because we love connecting with you guys, but also we connect with you on the terms that we set forth before you. If you don't have a personal invite from a content creator to go to a private part of their life, don't do it. It's a bad move. It's not respectful. You're showing that you don't care about them as a person, which is what we want. We want to respect you. You want to respect us. Just, just do that. Like normal human interactions, please. Obviously, this is the extreme of that scenario because like gunshots is like a whole nother level. Like this is on like uh, there was, was it Meg Turney and Gavin from the slow-mo guys? Like somebody invaded their house as well. Like. On one hand, there's no deterring those people who are already just like, clearly something is mentally wrong with you to be able to do that. But like on the other level, it stems from the place that people think it's okay to access their online creators because they feel that personal connection, which we want. We want that personal connection with you guys. However, we don't, like if we're not inviting you to the private aspects of our lives, respect that boundary. Like boundaries are there for a reason. Healthy relationships have boundaries and our healthy relationship is that you don't come to my house. Obviously we wish the best for the doctor and his family, but there's a general lesson for us all to learn here, not just this extreme scenario. So please treat your online content creators with love and respect. Now for this next one, we usually don't feature reviews on hot news just because like there's a bunch of them out there, but this is something that's very near and dear to my heart. And that's the review over on the verge of the Sony 1000X Mark III's, which is the successor to my current favorite headphones, the Sony 1000 Mark II's. I've got these refurbished on Amazon like six months ago. They're amazing. The noise canceling features, fantastic. The sound quality rivals most of the gaming headsets that we've had come into the office. Fantastic. And it looks like Sony's made some huge improvements on the Mark III's that are like well worth it. Uh, and so if you're interested in noise canceling headphones, I can't recommend these enough. And the Verge review seems to be very positive. So just cheeky little plug. Now I can't hear you. Next one, uh, we have an article over on PC World talking about how USB-C audio still doesn't work because they tested a whole bunch of USB-C uh, phones with their dongles that they're included and like most of them don't mix and match. There's a whole bunch of things that are wrong with it and they have very good reasoning on why the headphone jack still deserves to be in phones. So check out that article if you're interested at all. And this also brings up something that we talked about in yesterday's hot news with the iPad Pro, maybe having USB type C, which would mean that people who are on phones or who have Apple devices now need to have two different like I, the headphone adapters, they need to have a type C to three and a half and then they also need to have a lightning to three and a half if they wanna use their phone and their iPad Pro with regular headphones. 
Rip. Dong the money. Now let's talk about two little bits of news that make me very happy, which is first, uh, Linus Tech Tips hit 2 billion views on their channel. Good job, Papa Linus and team. We very much appreciate that. We are many, many thousands of those 2 billion views. So uh, thank you for the years of great content, even back in my high school days? Yeah, because it was him and Logan on Tiger Direct that I would watch. Linus was on NCIX and Logan was on Tiger Direct and I would watch both of them all of the time. So I got my start on YouTube with you guys. I love you so much. And then the second little bit of news that makes me happy is that Spider-Man, Insomniac Games, they're confirming that they are working on a new game plus, so that should be coming out. I've been thoroughly enjoying the PS4 Spider-Man game these past few days, playing it every night before I go to bed. And holy crap, did they get Spider-Man right. The web swinging, everything is just so nice in that game. I don't care it's on PlayStation. They did a great job. The graphics look really good for a console game. Anytime somebody tells me I need ray tracing, I look at the reflections on the Empire State Building. I'm just like, hmm, yeah, probably. But still, this looks dang good. And this is on consoles. And then some more happy news, I guess. It depends on actually how you look at it because this is gonna like remove jobs from the market, but then also give us a future that's less deadly. Uh, and that's Apple has increased their autonomy autonomous car fleet in the past four months by 27%, showing that they are going ham on the Apple car idea, trying to actually develop that, maybe even licensing off this technology to other car companies is a potential, but autonomous cars is the way of the future. It's the only way that we can like reduce accidents by like a tremendous amount. Like in a hundred years, we're gonna look back and be like, why did we let people drive death traps around? And why did we accept the casualties that we have in normal car driving? Because it's gonna be a relic of the past of how dangerous car driving actually is, and then autonomous cars are gonna be here to save the day until they all go rogue, Skynet takes them over, and then they kill us all. But I'd rather have a few years where like everything's good and then die in a horrific car crash than uh, you know, have it the way it is now, I suppose. Future progress. Now we have some bad Intel news, which honestly is kind of worse when you actually think about what the company has said in the past and the things that they've established for themselves for the future. It's like, it's worse than it looks on surface. So right now, it, uh, there's a report out of DigiTimes saying that Intel is going to be sourcing out its production of 14 nanometers to TSMC, who actually does fabrication of 14 nanometers. This is a big deal because Intel has always been firm on using their own fabrication plants and the fact that they can't meet capacity on 14 nanometer chips and chipsets means that they are actually in huge dire straits when it comes to their 10 nanometer lineup as well as actually being able to sustain what they have going right now. So it's actually no wonder that the CEO got fired previously. It's no wonder that they're actually bringing on all of this new talent to hopefully relieve them of this bottleneck because they are in a rough, place. The reason they're doing this is because they just can't keep up. They should have had 10 nanometers over 18 months ago to come out to the market. So the next generation of Cannon Lake is what we should be on, on this next release that we're getting. But unfortunately we're getting a Coffee Lake refresh because they just can't get their 10 nanometer architecture to work. And that's one of the big advantages Intel has always had over the competition is that they produce everything in house. But now with them having to outsource 14 nanometer chips, which is likely going to be most chipsets as well as most of their CPUs, and they're gonna keep the Xeon and the H310 chipsets in house on their 14 nanometer uh, plants, it, like, it just kind of screams huge desperation from Intel and the moves that they're making in, as far as their acquisitions kind of also show that they know that they no longer have an advantage when it comes to the CPU market and that AMD likely will have a very strong 2019 and Intel is gonna whimper away until about 2020. So Intel, losing its performance crown, losing its production crown, and kind of being relegated to somewhat of a backseat CPU maker, at least for the next year, as they continue to struggle with their chip development, that kind of sucks. As much as I want AMD to resurge, I want healthy competition. With Intel losing, that's not healthy competition, that's them being removed from competition. I want both chip makers to actually produce something that we really want. Not exactly a level playing field in that regard, but I'm glad to see AMD is resurging with great market share and better mind share. Which, speaking of AMD market share and mind share, there is uh, an article out from Tom's Hardware discussing the fact that Intel being behind means that AMD could have a better entry into the mobile uh, environment with better products in the Ryzen mobile segment with laptops and Intel not being able to produce 14 nanometer and then probably not selling a whole heck of a lot in laptops and with them not necessarily needing to push the laptop market, AMD could see resurgence in the mobile market too. 
according to Tom's Hardware. We'll have to see where it goes. I've heard a ton about how AMD is going to do a whole lot in the mobile market, and we've gotten crap all from them, realistically. But good new Intel news, something that they're actually moving forward on is they're developing a memory plant in New Mexico to hopefully help them develop their new cross point and Optane memory technologies, which is something that uh, they split from Micron uh, a couple months ago, a month ago, we reported on hot news. They're no longer gonna be making cross point together with Micron. They're each gonna go their separate ways. And so this new memory plant is then moving forward with Optane new cross point technology, hopefully bringing that more to the consumer as well as Micron doing that as well. So healthy competition in the memory side of things. Intel Memory Maker coming to the US. And in probably the weirdest CPU news we have today, the new NVIDIA drivers that have come out, the GeForce Drivers 399.24, actually fix gaming performance on Threadripper. Yes, apparently, according to the bug fix, they said game performance drops in half when moving from 16 core to 32 core CPUs, and they've actually fixed that. And then PC Perspective did testing post update, pre update, and showing that indeed, you really do get close to double the performance on the 2990 WX with this new Nvidia driver update as far as game performance goes, and it actually even outpaces the 1950X. So that's pretty good. But yeah, AMD and Nvidia working together, but CPU and GPU division, so. Win. So big bummer if you purchased any sort of ticket through British Airways between August 24th 1st and September 5th because it turns out there was a credit card skimming code injected into the website where the people who actually process transactions there had their data basically stolen. Obviously that script is no longer on the British Airways websites and but British Airways hasn't really given a comment about it but just be safe when you're on the internet folks this is one of the reasons why cryptocurrencies probably need to like be in more effect because then it's not tied to all of this other information just because they have your wallet address doesn't mean they can do anything with that. Now GPU news, uh, AMD GPU news specifically, wow, that was hard to say. Uh, PowerColor just announced that they have the Vega 56 Nano that's gonna be coming out. I'm actually really curious. Do you guys care about a Vega 56 Nano? Vote in that poll right up there. Yes, no, don't care at all. Whatever, uh, I don't know what I'm gonna put in the poll, but just let me know, do you care about this news at all? Do you care that Vega 56 is getting a nano version? Does that help you at all? Especially with the introduction of the 20 series. Now it's time for NVIDIA GPU news, because that's what you guys care about. There's now pictures of the Gigabyte RTX 2070 Gaming OC. Fantastic, who cares? We don't know when it's coming out, so irrelevant in my book. Also doesn't have NVLink connectors, uh, doesn't have SLI, so no multi-GPU on the 70 and below, which they screwed us over with the 1060 last generation, so let's do it on the 70 this generation, they thought. And then we have clock speed information on the 2080 Ti and the 2080, specifically the EVGA cards they've revealed that their RTX 2080 Ti will range from 1650 to 1635 megahertz. That was a weird way of saying that. And then the RTX 2080 will go from 1800 megahertz to 1850 megahertz. So this actually shows that uh, AIV partners aren't uh, not allowed to do overclocking with the cards right out of the box like they were with the 1070 Ti. As far as what that clock speed will mean in terms of like comparison to the clock speeds on the 10 series, we still don't know. It, like you can have lower clock speeds and still have much faster gaming performance. There was a tweet showing the MSI afterburner performance of like overclocking the card can actually get the 2080 Ti to reach 2050 megahertz, which is quite good. So about roughly the same clock speeds that you would expect on an overclock Pascal is what we could expect for Turing. So architectural improvements is what's gonna be the main differentiator as far as like normal game performance. Then if you care at all about the actual specifics of how Turing works, video cards posted information uh, that was supposed to come out on the 14th, but they're pre-releasing it because it's video cards and they leak stuff. So if you wanna know how the array tracing cores work with int, uh, integer 32 uh, performance as well as floating point 32, and then as well as tensor cores, all of that is going on with uh, how Turing works that like there's new information about like the actual architecture. So check out the link in the video description for that. And then finally, there's more information about uh, NVIDIA potentially changing the embargo date on the RTX 2080. It was supposed to be on the 17th of September, so this coming Monday, but apparently uh, reviewers don't really have cards and the final drivers aren't out yet if all rumors are to be believed. Uh, so reviewers can't really hard review these, at least they couldn't a couple days ago, and so they pushed it back by two days. Now the review date, uh, the embargo lift date for reviews for the 2080 and the 2080 Ti will both be on September 
19th, which is a week from today. So there you go, NVIDIA uh, giving you one day to decide on reviews, whether or not you wanna buy it, but too bad they're already sold out, so. And that's gonna wrap it up for all of the hot news we have today. Let me know what you think of Intel using somebody else for their fabrication, the NVIDIA driver fixing Threadripper, and then also the embargo being pushed back on the RTX cards or anything else we talked about down in those comments. Let's chat about that down there. Don't forget to hit the like button, like button, hit that like button. If you enjoyed this video, please get subscribed so you can stay up to date on all of our tech-related content. Hit that bell as well, makes things go round. Anyways, I'm Brett with the UFD Tech channel. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see your smiling faces again in the next hot news. Love you too.